Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on work and energy. The topic of this video is work calculations, and we want to know what is the equation for work and how do you use the equation to calculate the work done upon an object. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the concept and mathematics of work. If you need to review it, you'll find a link to it in the description section below. One thing we learned in this video is that the amount of work done by a force upon an object depends upon the amount of force acting on the object, the amount of displacement the object experiences, and the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector, which we call the angle theta. The equation for work is work equal the force multiplied by the displacement multiplied by the cosine of this angle theta between f and d. The unit for work is the joule, abbreviated j, where 1j is equal to 1 newton multiplied by 1 meter. Perhaps the most difficult thing about this equation is the angle theta. Theta is an angle measured between two vectors, the force and the displacement vector. If they're in the same direction, the angle of theta is 0 degrees. If they're in opposite direction, the angle is measured as 180 degrees. And for any other angle, you simply measure the angle between these two vectors, and that's the value of theta. In our first example, we want to determine the work done when a rightward force of 65 newtons displaces a 15 kilogram box a distance of 2 meters to the right. In order to calculate work, we need to know the value of force, the value of displacement, and the angle of theta between the force and displacement vectors. So I begin with a diagram. I show the initial position of the box, the final position of the box, and the force acting upon the box is 65 newtons. It acts over a displacement value of 2 meters. I want to know the angle between the force and displacement vector. When they go in the same direction, that angle is 0 degrees. Now I take my value of force and my value of displacement, and I substitute it into the equation for work. I put 0 degrees for theta, and the cosine of 0 is 1. Using my calculator, the value of work is 130 joules. The second example involves a lifting motion. I want to know how much work does an upward force do when lifting a 15 kilogram box a distance of 2 meters above its starting location at a constant speed. Once more, I need to know the force, the displacement, and the angle between force and displacement. So I begin with a diagram, and I have the initial position of the box with a force acting upward on it to move it to its final position 2 meters above its starting location. So I know the value of D, but I'm not given the value of F. But what I know is that the box moves at constant speed in a straight line, which tells me that the forces must balance, which means the upward force that I'm trying to determine must be equivalent to the downward force of gravity. Knowing that the force of gravity is equal to m times g, I can calculate this upward force. The mass here is 15 kilograms. I multiply it by 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and I get an upward force of 147 newtons. I now know f and d in the angle theta is simply the angle between these two vectors, the force vector and the displacement vector. When they go in the same direction, that angle is 0 degrees. Now I'm ready to use my work equation. I take 147 newtons, I multiply it by 2 meters, and I multiply it by the cosine of the angle between f and d. The cosine is 0, is 1, and so 147 times 2 gives me a work value of 294 joules. In our third example, we want to know the work done when a 65 newton force exerted at 30 degrees above the horizontal displaces a 15 kilogram box a distance of 2 meters to the right. In the diagram, we see the force acting on the box, and it displaces the box 2 meters to the right. We show that in the diagram. We want to know the angle between the F and the D. Since the D is to the right, and the force is 30 degrees above the right, the angle between F and D is 30 degrees. Now I can take my values of F, D, and theta and substitute it into the work equation. I go 65 newtons times 2 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees. Using my calculator, I find out the value for work is approximately 113 joules. Now if I wish to round this to two significant digits, which would be important to some people, then I end up with 110 joules. 
The fourth example involves sliding friction, and I want to know how much work is done by friction when stopping a 15 kilogram box as it slides to a stop over a distance of 2 meters. So I begin with the diagram, and I show the displacement of 2 meters to the right. Friction acts opposite the box, it's directed to the left. So the angle between the F and the D vector here is 180 degrees, typically the case for sliding friction forces. Now the crux of this problem involves finding the value for the force of friction. The force of friction is equal to mu times F norm, and for a box on a horizontal surface, F norm is equal to the weight of the box, M times G. So to calculate the force of friction, I go mu times M times G, that is 0.4 times 15 times 9.8, and I get 58.8 newtons as the force of friction acting on the box. Now I know F, D, and theta, and I can substitute it into my work equation. The cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1, and when I do my math, I end up getting a value of negative 117.6 joules for the work done on the box. I can round this to two significant digits such that the work is negative 120 joules. Our fifth example involves the motion along an incline plane. I want to know how much work is done by a 75 newton force applied parallel to the incline to move a 15 kilogram box a distance of 2 meters along the incline. So here's my incline plane with a 30 degree incline angle. A box moves along it parallel to the incline a distance of 2 meters because of a force that acts parallel to the incline. I know the F, I know the D, and I need to know the theta. Theta is not 30 degrees. That's the incline angle. Theta in the work equation is the angle between the force and displacement vectors. And since they go in the same direction, the angle theta is 0 degrees. Now I know F, D, and theta. I can substitute into my work equation, and I can solve for the value of work. 75 times 2 times the cosine of 0 is 150 joules. In our last example, I want to determine the total work done when there are multiple forces acting upon an object. A 10 newton force is applied to push a 2 kilogram box to the right for a displacement of 5 meters across a friction free surface. Determine the total work done. The free body diagram shows the individual forces, their values, and their direction. This object is displaced to the right for 5 meters. In order to calculate the total work done, I need to calculate the work done by each individual force. I'll begin with the two vertical forces. For F grav and F norm, the angle between the up and the right and the down and the right is 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 degrees is 0, so the work done by these two forces would be 0 joules. Put another way, vertical forces do not do work on horizontally moving objects. That leaves one individual force remaining, the applied force. It's directed to the right, and the displacement is to the right, so the angle between the applied force and the displacement is 0 degrees. I can calculate the work done by this applied force. I substitute 10 newtons for F, 5 meters for D, and 0 degrees for theta, and I get 50 joules. That's the work done by the supplied force, and when I add up all the work values, the total work is 50 joules. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could I ask you to help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are two resources that you'll find on our website. Each one would help make the learning stick. We've left links to both in the description section of this video. They both include practice problems with work calculations, and in each case, there's an answer and a solution or explanation given. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.